Ah, the standard kitchen microwave. Pretty much a staple in every American kitchen, and probably every kitchen in most of the world for at least the past 20 or 30 years, although some people, like my uncle, <laughs> don't uh, have, a, have a microwave, and that is an intentional practice because they don't believe in that sort of stuff. Although it's interesting because at pretty much every apartment complex that we looked at, uh, the units don't actually include microwaves, so you have to buy your own. Not sure what the reason for that is, and that's the, the reason why we have a standalone microwave sitting on our cabinet. But as I said, yes, pretty much a standard for the past several years. But let's cast our minds back again for about 30 or 40 years back when having a microwave was considered a luxury. Now cooking something in the microwave is considered crass, if unless it's a lonely uh, uh, kitchen microwavable meal. But everybody still loves them. Everybody uses them. And uh, whether or not you want to admit that this, your, your, your biggest culinary uh, tool is a microwave, well, you know it's true. And again, this is ours. Cheap, but it does the job, and it microwaves things fairly well. Not really sure the wattage of it. I'm sure it's probably about 1,000 watts, maybe 1,100, somewhere in that neighborhood, which is pretty much standard for a higher-class microwave. But things weren't always like this. No, how, let's go back to 1975, and this is what you'd get. That's right, this is an Amana radar range. See right there, radar range, made only by Amana. Back when Amana was actually a decent brand and not pretty much just a a brand that pretty much Chinese used to license crappy products. Although I think Amana does actually still do uh, make, there is still some clout established with Amana. Um, not terribly sure. That or if it's gone the way of uh, Sunbeam, which is pretty much just a Dollar Tree brand now. Um, this is a timeless microwave. It, it would go so well right next to one of those Sunbeam uh, micro, uh, toasters that uh, automatically uh, lower and uh, raise the bread. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those, but my mom does. So, you know, maybe I can go borrow hers <laughs> and we can have it right, right side by side. But like I said, this is a fairly old microwave and it's pretty big. Um, I really should get a, a tape measure so we can measure, the, measure how big this is. Because, yeah, this is a pretty tall microwave. And not only that, it's super heavy. Just, it, it's it's in pretty darn good shape for its age. This is from 1975, if I haven't said it yet. Could use a little bit of a cleaning, but, you know, haven't, haven't done that yet. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to show it to you. Um, I love the controls. That's one of my favorite things about it. It just looks so dated, but at the same time, it just looks so cool with the big buttons and the screen that you really can barely see. It really kind of is that uh, hard to see. I mean, it's not as hard as to see in person as, in, as it is on camera, but it's still pretty hard to see. Although having this electric screen, it probably was a luxury because not all of them have a uh, electric screen like this. Although some of them also have a, a uh, power control and this one does not have it, although it does have a slow cook button. Not sure how that works, but I'm sure it's spelled out in the manual, which I do have. So let me put this uh, on the tripod and uh, I can move the microwave back and I'll show you what it says on the back. Have I told you how heavy this thing is yet? Wait till you see how much power this thing draws. So yes, from despite being from 1975, it has a pretty um, appropriate power cord. I'm actually very am amazed that it has such a decent power cord. It's very long, but again, it's, it's, it's grounded. I'm not going to unplug it because it doesn't let you set the date and the time right away when you unplug it and plug it back in. But if things go my way, I should be able to put a kilowatt on this so we can see how much, how much power it uses in real time. Um, yeah, so right there was the manufacture date, not down to the day, but Manufactured October 1975, and there's a bunch of information about the magnetron because, like I said, this this is a very early microwave because back in the 70s it was not common to see somebody that actually had a microwave in their house. This says 1974. Now take a look at the wattage of this. Does it say it? Come on, it's got to say it somewhere because I know it does. You probably already saw it, but no, for some reason it just isn't telling us. But I know it does. 
Hmm. Well, I'll spill the beans. It draws 1600 watts. Oh, it says it right there. Sorry. Yep, 1600 watts. So this thing is a beast. A serious beast. You will not find a microwave made now that takes 1600 watts. Pretty much what this is saying is if you don't put this on its own circuit, you are going to have blown fuses, which I, this actually did blow a fuse. <laughs> not really sure how it did, but it just did. Let me just make sure it's centered on the camera. Uh, that's as good as it's going to get, I guess. So, what's different from pretty much any microwave made today, well, most microwaves made today, I should say, I guess, because some of the higher class ones do, this one has a door that opens like this. And there's the inside with its working light. And, uh, you know, obviously, again, down to the age. Let's look at the intricacy of the... Um, of the tray, not uh, not a turntable, unfortunately, but like I said, this is back in the day again where we didn't see this. You know, th this is so new. I mean, nobody even thought to put a turntable on this. They were just like amazed, like oh my god, we have something like this that actually can go in somebody's house. Uh, I haven't ran this through the dishwasher yet. Probably ought to do that, unless it specifically tells us not to do it. But I don't say anything that it does. So yeah. Um, Here's the control module, which amazingly, these microwaves are designed to be serviced. Um, if you look, well, you can't see it, but there's screws that hold this together that have evidence to suggest that they were, you know, opened. And there's actually service manuals that I have, or some service um, bills that people have, somebody's actually paid to have this thing serviced. Because I'm sure this was probably four figures, or at least the equivalent to in today's money of four figures when it was bought. So, I don't know where 69 came from. <laughs> So uh, I, this is a pretty, you know, standard uh, microwave as far as operating. You know, it's not, not much has changed except for the fact that we have a reset button. Obviously, we have one through zero, reset, clock, defrost, slow cook, and timer. So this has a kitchen timer. Um, we have the start, stop, and light buttons. The light button will turn the light on at any time because uh, when the microwave is operating and when the door is closed, it does not light automatically. So if you decide that you want to watch something cook, you press that button. Unfortunately, you can also leave it on and potentially burn out your bulb. And very nice buttons too, by the way. What's interesting, and I'm not going to do this for long because you're not supposed to microwave something without, you're not supposed to have a microwave on without something in it. Pressing holding start will actually start the microwave. <laughs> not sure if it's a full, it actually starts the, well, we could figure that out because I could put the kilowatt on it, but not sure if it starts the magnetron and everything or if it just starts the fan, but it, it could actually be starting the, doing the full-fledged microwaving. Um, yeah, so um, another thing that you can't really see is there is a way to actually disable the beeper, which is a very different beeper from what we're used to. If you look all the way down here, again, screws that are designed to service it. There is a switch to turn the buzzer off. Doing that will make it so it does not beep. If it's two in the morning and you're trying to microwave, I don't know, pizza pockets. <laughs> Although like I said, this is a fairly different um, buzz than what I'm used to, so I'll let you hear that in a little bit. But um, I'll show you what I got with it first. Since whoever whoever bought this definitely had some money and uh, they, they took very, very good care of it. So. The first thing I got, the first thing I got was a microwave cooking thermometer made ex uh, made expressly for the use in the radar range microwave oven, actually made by Taylor. So you're probably thinking this doesn't look very different from any other kitchen um, kitchen thermometer, but remember, you can't put metal in the microwave, so this will actually you can actually put this in and leave it in while it's microwave and it looks like somebody's actually done that because this is a pretty yellowed top. I'm not sure if that can be reversed or not, but see it's got the radar range logo and everything on it. There's also a document that they put that I put in here, so it's not too difficult to get out, that uh, gives some figures as to how things should be cooked. I'll put that right there so it doesn't roll off. So I'm in a radar range, 
microwave oven cooking thermometer. Not sure if this was had to have been bought separately or if it was included in the box with the microwave. It almost sounds like it may not have been included, but considering how much this probably was, I have a hard time believing that they, did, they didn't include a silly little uh, thermometer, especially considering how new at the time microwaves were. This really was a new way of cooking. So let's take a look and see what else I got. So here is the user manual. The use and care manual. We have some fuses. I'm not sure what these are for. I assume it's something to do with the microwave. Um, it's from Douglas Distri uh, Distributing Corp, Distribution Corporation, or something like that, on V Street Northeast in Washington D.C. I'm guessing that's the person who owned it. Looks like this was actually uh, mailed. Does it have a date on it? January uh, 17th, 1977. If you look on the postmark right there. And... Uh, oh, radar range interlock views. <laughs> that, that, that answers that question. And as you can see, there is the views right there. Very interesting looking. Wonder how hard it would be to get some, one of these now. And then we have a bunch of different things that are written down. And unfortunately, we don't have a receipt from when this was bought. But we do have quite a bit of other stuff. A lot of it with handwriting I honestly can't read. Write it. Don't say it from the Republican Party of Virginia Beach. With again, some really kind of bad handwriting. I'm sure back in the day this was considered proper, but it's just, it's, it's hard to read now. Let's see, right here we have, oh, here's the warranty card. Full five-year Magnetron warranty, plus full one-year total appliance warranty, plus an additional full, limited four-year warranty on other, all other parts. For five years from the date of purchase, a man will repair or replace free of charge any defective or ma uh, malfunctioning magnetron tube. Remember, like I said, this was very early days for a microwave, so I'm sure despite these being uh, you know, old appliances being built to last, it was still, like I said, early days, so I'm sure there's a lot of failures that did happen with these. I don't feel like I need to go through all of these, but I will show you this. This is a, I think this is a receipt from when it was actually fixed at some point. Looks like somebody needed a module for $110. It looks like they had some sort of a rebate. This is from, let's see if it tells us when it was from. I'm just looking off camera to see if there's, ah. So they bought this, it actually says they bought this 12, 13, 75. And the, the, the date of service was 7281. So, unfortunately, whatever service this was was out of warranty. So, they had to probably pay for it out of pocket. But, considering how expensive, again, this probably was back in the day, I'm sure it was a drop in the bucket for them. This is from the Latham in Philadelphia. I wonder if that hotel's still around. I'm sure somebody knows. We have some more documentation for, again, more servicing. This one's from 1985. Tribbles, Appliance Parts Distributors, from Oxon Hill, Maryland. 
And they the branch that they reached out to was the one in Maryfield, which is in Fairfax. And they actually used a credit card. Or a debit card. I'm not really sure what they used. But I'm sure, like I said, either way, from the 80s, that was that was when credit cards. Oh. Here is probably here is presumably the credit card slip from that. Wow. I'm sure somebody's going to come up and say, you shouldn't be sharing all this stuff. Well, you shouldn't be including it in your microwave when you sell it. And here's another one you can, oh, actually, no, that one has, that one has somebody's credit card number. I'm not going to show that one. Then something else from Tribbles. Wow, this uh, Visa card had four, seven, 10, 13 numbers. Now Visas have 16 numbers. Let's just get all this gathered back up. All right, and now we're gonna take a look at the manual. So again, a man. This is the Touchmatic radar range because again, it's got the buttons. Use and care manual. And this is going to be a pain in the butt to read. I'm really sorry if it's hard to read for you. I'm going to have to put up really close because this is a really bad color for putting black text over. I mean, I can see it just fine, but the the camera clearly, at least the screen that the camera has, is showing me that it cannot read it very well. This colorful book contains hundreds of recipes, tips, and other cooking suggestions that will help you take full advantage of the miracle of cooking with microwaves. Actually, first, I just want to get this out of the way because I'm sure a lot of people are going to love this. And this is obviously something you don't see anymore, and probably for good reason. <clears throat> In 1854, a group of God-fearing people from of West German, Swiss, and... Uh, I'll... St we're going to skip that word. Ancestry left New York State and founded the Seven Villages of Amana in the fertile fields of, fields of Iowa. I just love the part of God-fearing people. Yeah, we don't see that anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're a great person, but you, you, I mean, you can be a great person without having to, you know, be a, be a God-fearing man. There's some various pictographs of what they do. Like, there's somebody with an air conditioner. This is some pretty cool stuff. Printed in the USA. All right, so this is the first page. Oh wow, that white balance is way off. These precautions should be read to avoid any possible exposure to microwave radiation or electric shock. Telling you not to remove the ground. And there's our microwave, the model number RR6W. Brand new and spiffy and shiny. Let's see, I wanna, I wanna show you something specifically that I find really funny. This right here. Registration, also included with this packet, come, also included with the packet that comes with this unit is a registration punched card. This must be filled out and returned to Amana Refrigeration Inc. Amana, Iowa, Federal re regulation require that all manufacturers of microwave ovens have a permanent record of the owners of each unit. I wonder if Amana actually does have, uh, still have, uh, still retains that record of people who have bought this. I, I also love this too, because like I said, again, this is back when microwaves were new. For the first few days, and I'm sorry if I, have, if I keep jittering and moving this around, there's a bunch of things on my screen that make it hard for me to read this. For the first few days that you have the unit in your home, we suggest that you leave a cup of a cup or glass of water in the unit when it is not in use. This will help protect the oven if it should accidentally be turned on. Uh, it should be accidentally turned on or curiosity of a family of the. Fa I'm sorry. <laughs> 
This will help protect the oven if it is act if it should accidentally be turned on, or curiosity of the family might run the oven without a load in it. It is possible to damage the magnetron tube without if the, the unit is operated with it without anything in it. Things not to do. If I wasn't afraid of taking this thing apart, I would totally just scan it into the computer so everybody can see this. Because this is so cool. There's the touch there there is the uh, touchmatic control panel. That looks a little bit easier to see than it does now. And look, dishes you may use versus dishes you may not use. Pretty much anything with metal in it. When time runs out, a pleasant two-second beep signals at the, t the t that the time is complete. And cleaning the unit, do not operate the unit when empty. Do not rest food or cook around the door. Do not remove outer case at any time. Be sure to return the registration card. Your radar, your radar range will not be registered. And your name is required by federal regulation unless the, the uh, registration card is returned. And the maintenance tips, because this is, again, back when things were serviceable. How to change the light. Cleaning the discharge air vents. before you call the serviceman, because calling the serviceman now is throwing the microwave away and getting a new one. Because, again, things are prone to breakage now. New radar range automatic defrost. Because thawing should be accomplished by evenly un uh, throughout the... Because thawing should be accomplished evenly throughout the product, the unit is designed to operate at only, on only 33% of the normal power operated in the defrost cycle. Some foods are easier to defrost. And then we have some pre-programmed oven charts. Imagine cooking some of these things in the, in the, in the microwave. I'm sure, I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely sure this was back in the day when they were trying to sell the heck out of this because this was back before microwave foods were common. You know, now everything is designed to be put in the microwave, but back then they were trying to figure out what can we do with this because, like I said, most things were designed to be cooked on the oven, or in the oven or on the stove. Because, look, think, I mean, how would you think about cooking a hamburger patty in the um in the uh, microwave. Or is this just for defrosting? I don't know. Veal rump roast cooking for 27 minutes. Again, is that, is that in the microwave or not? There's the end of the book. With the God-fearing stuff. Alright, so what do you say we... Uh, Try to microwave something. <laughs> so this is going to be a little bit of a test too. So see, I have two bowls, two identical bowls, filled up with two cups of water, and I'm going to try a microwave, one in this microwave and one in that microwave, and we're going to see after a um, predetermined amount of time how hot the cup of water is when it's done. Now granted, this is probably the easiest to test in a microwave because water is a very easy thing to heat up, it at least give us a nice baseline. What we're going to use to test it is good old radar range thermometer. So let's try this out. So here is the first test. It is in our existing microwave, and I don't need anybody to tell me how dirty our microwave is because I already know that. So here is the existing thermometer for the radar range, and we're going to put it in for a minute and 30 seconds. So. All right, I'll come back when it's done. Oh, in case you're wondering, I didn't want to give this too much time because remember, water boils at 212 degrees. So if we have this microwaving the bowl of water and it hits 212 degrees, we're just kind of at that point. Once it reaches that point, there's really no more no more point to having it microwaved. And we can't see the temperature in there until it's done. So I'm trying to give it a long enough time to where it can do something, but not long enough to where hopefully it doesn't start boiling. Let's see what we're up to. We are up to just at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty much exactly, actually. I'm quite impressed. I mean, not impressed with the cook time. I'm not really sure what... I don't have a baseline, but just I just think it's kind of cool that it got exactly up to 120 degrees. And it's probably going to start going down by now, so we're going to get this out of the microwave.
And yeah, so we'll call that 120 degrees. All right, so now we're going to put the other bowl in this microwave. Come on, there we go. You don't pull it in the middle, sometimes it doesn't unlatch right. And we're gonna put that right in the middle. And then there, is the, there goes the thermometer. And we're going to put it in here and close the door. Now, you see there's a stop button. This doesn't operate like you think it does. Let's say we start putting in a minute 30. Oh, I put in 50, okay, or the five. So what we're gonna have to do, we can't press stop. That won't reset, we have to press the reset button. So that kind of acts as a stop. The stop button, how the stop and cancel button, how it normally does in modern microwaves. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna punch in a minute, 30 seconds. As you, as you can hear, it doesn't beep. It doesn't give us any audible feedback. And we're gonna press start. And another interesting thing is, this actually has an interlock on it. You can't pull the microwave open when it's cooking. The only way to do that is to hit the stop button. And that's the pleasant beep it was talking about. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh no! Look at that. We are not up to 120 degrees. We're only up to, looks like about 105. So at 1600 watts is not doing as well. Again, but remember, this does not have a turntable, and this is a lot larger of a microwave. So it's, if it was just, if it was smaller, I bet it would cook much faster. But like because it's so big, it's kind of hard to cook so fast. But still fair game. It did its best. I'm thinking about what I want to do next. I'm wondering if I should take this out or leave it back in, but we're gonna take it out for now. There it is. I'd say this is the first sort of stormy weather of, this, of the year. Look at that. You see how dark and uh, hazy it is over there. Well, you can probably, I can see it, which reminds me of a thunderstorm. Now, it didn't start thunderstorming, and as you can see, another fabulous part of this apartment complex. <laughs> but yes, it, I am hopeful that we start getting more thunderstorms because I absolutely love thunderstorms. While I have the uh, camera off the tripod, I'll just let you see inside here while it's open. It's very shiny, very shiny actually. This doesn't get clean very much. Normally you see the magnetron on the side, but it seems like it's in the top somewhere. If we were to go over to this microwave over here, we'll see that the magnetron is actually right there, this cover here. So, interesting how it actually is from the top and not from the side. All right, so I have a setup ready to go, and as you can see, the microwave is not on anymore. And I brought down my kilowatt. If you've never seen one of these, these are pretty incredible, actually. I paid twenty dollars for this after this was on the Harbor Freight after the after uh, a sale that was going on with these, as well as a fifteen percent off coupon that you can always get. And yeah, this is an invaluable thing to have. It pretty much tells you how many watts or amps something is pulling. And I would, I again, I totally recommend having at least one of these on hand at all times. So this is kind of a janky setup. Forgive me. So here is the kilowatt, it's booting up, and says we are at, sitting at 123 volts. And there's the beep. And according to this now, we are pulling 6 watts, just by it sitting here doing nothing. Not that great, but at the end of the day, 6 watts is not going to bankrupt you. This is about $6 a year if left on and not doing anything. So. Eh, you know, I mean, it really depends on how frugal you are. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, it's on, but if I try to set the timer or the, the clock, it won't let me. But it's still on, and by putting the light on, we jump up to 23 watts. 
So what's that, about a 15 watt light bulb? Okay, so let's get, let's, let's, let's see what happens if I do this, see if it actually is running the magnetron and everything. Ooh, look at that, look at that. <laughs> 80, 81. That's weird. Let's try and set the time. Clock. Okay, so we have it on. And, well, we have the clock on now, and it's jumped up to 7.5 watts. So I guess the this takes about a watt of electricity. So when we press start, let's see what happens again. No, it actually is not running the magnetron because we're only sitting at 86 watts. But, let me put this down. Pressing this does actually lock it. And you can hear that, that's the interlock. I'm not gonna keep doing that, but yeah, that, that is the interlock right there. So, let's get cooking. We are going to take this bowl of water. This is from the, the first microwave test, but it doesn't really matter since I'm not testing this for for speed anymore. I'm just putting this in here so we don't damage the magnetron. All right, so we're gonna put this on for a minute. Yep, we are sitting at 1,550 uh, kilowatts. Kilowatts, watts. <laughs> so what is that, 1.5 kilowatts, I guess? But yeah, 1,500 kilowatts. Again, <laughs> 1,500 watts are being pulled from this microwave. That is a lot of electricity. We're gonna stop that. Wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> 1500 watts and what's uh, what you can also do if you put zero in it runs it for just a split second and that's the beep if you love that I guess it really depends on whether or not you like it or not like I said we could also turn that off but I like it on. And again, we could put it in timer, so five seconds, timer. And if we do, let's, let's do five seconds, slow cook, start. Actually, this is a good test right here. So we're gonna put it in for a minute, slow cook. Start, and we're going to see what the what the uh, kilowatts telling us. So we're sitting at 80 watts. So it's not running the, the it's not running the magnetron right now. Since we're sitting at 80 watts, now it's running the magnetron because we're going up to 1500 watts again. Now we're not running the the, the uh, magnetron since now we're down at 80 watts again. Very quiet ma uh, magnetron. You can just barely hear it start up. Now we're going to do the same test except with defrost, so we're going to put in a minute on the clock. Defrost, start. So we're sitting at, hmm, so the magnetron's not running.
There it goes. So it, 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 I, it's it said in the manual that keeping it on defrost only keeps it on a third of the time, so that, that that's not necessarily inaccurate. Uh, but yeah, so there is the magnetron hooked up to the kilowatt. It's going to be probably a very hot cup of a bowl of water. Actually, it's probably it's actually not too hot. I wouldn't want to touch the water, but well, we can see how hot the water is. It's up to just shy. It's about it's up to about 135 degrees. So yeah. So I guess that's just about it for all of y'all that are probably looking at this thinking, oh my God, I want this microwave so bad. Sorry, it's already been spoken for. I'm not keeping this. It's way too big. And the, we're actually in the process of moving soon to a place that does have a microwave. So there's no reason to have three microwaves. So we're going to plan on getting, uh, I have a friend that I'm going to be giving this to who I know will take good care of it. Uh, when he was younger, they actually did have a radar range too, slightly different than this one. Uh, didn't have the chrome finish, but yeah, so I, he, he says he plans to use it uh, on regular operations, so more power to him. Uh, again, sorry I'm not giving this away or selling this, unless you want to offer me a couple hundred bucks at least and want to pay for shipping. Then we might talk. But other than that, yeah, so this is my, my uh, Amana Radar Range microwave. All right, it's late, and before I went to bed, I decided I wanted to have a little treat before I went to bed. And I thought, you might as well make some s'mores. And I thought even more, because I, since I have to re-stitch the video together because I forgot to put in the end card. Why not include this in the video so we can have another test as to see how well the radar range works in making a timeless classic. That's right, a s'more. And it's not going to be a pretty one. You know, we're not going to have so no fancy uh, preparatory work here. Just uh, the, th the three main ingredients to a s'more. Let me get on this side so I can actually see the, the viewfinder. Um, marshmallows from Delhi, I mean Food Lion and then some graham crackers, and then fun size Hershey's bars. These seem to work perfectly fine since it fits perfectly on a graham cracker. No need to open a whole candy bar just for one section, especially if you're not eating that many, or if you're making one s'more. Mm-mm-mm. Cheap graham crackers. Man, I remember when they would occasionally put these out in school, individually wrapped packets, of course, and man, I loved graham crackers then. Something always tastes better when it's individually wrapped. Saltines are another example of that. So we're going to go ahead and put some graham crackers on a plate. Then we're going to go get our Hershey's bar, our fun size Hershey's bar. Did you know, I went to World Market the other day, and they had international Kit Kats. If you're not aware, you've never left America and you haven't researched this, Kit Kats are actually made by Nestle everywhere else in the world, and just in America, they're made by Hershey's. And let me tell you one thing, the Hershey's ones are so much better than the Nestle ones. But I digress. Here is our plate. Now I'm gonna put the, the um, chocolate in first since it takes longer to melt. Marshmallows can kinda get everywhere when you put them in the microwave, so you don't wanna keep them in there too long. Let's see, we're gonna put 30 seconds on the clock. All right, and uh, they're still a little hard. These are kind of older chocolates, but they'll do just fine And with that. They're, they're kind of gooey. I, I don't know about you, but I just don't like my uh, chocolate super, super gooey because it kind of just makes a mess. I know I'm breaking the rules by not, by putting a, a plate on the, on the door. It says you're not supposed to do that, but I don't think I have to worry about anything with a saucer of this size. So we're going to get ourselves a marshmallow, and we're going to put this thing back in the oven. I'm sorry, the radar range. Kind of stick that in the middle there, and then we're going to put this in here for the remaining 10 seconds. And you can see that micro that um, marshmallow started to over expand, but that's okay. So. 
The next uh, thing we need to do is we need to take the, uh, the side with the marshmallow and be very careful because it's going to be hot and it's going to be sticky and going to get everywhere. And you put it on your graham cracker on the other side and then we need to start crunching it down. Now it's going to obviously start you know, getting everywhere, so we're going to try and do this slowly because it's going to, the, the marshmallow, as it, the longer it's out of the microwave, the kind of smaller it'll eventually get, so that's why you're trying to be careful with it. Did you know marshmallows are not uh, vegetarian because they're made by boiling various parts of animal um, tendons? True story, look it up. That's how gelatin is made. <clears throat> mm, 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 look at that. That is a yummy looking s'more, but... The best way to test it is to try it. Now that is one yummy s'more. 